Hello, today is an electronics exploration. I got this mystery box at a radio swap meet called a ham fest. These are meetups that happen all over the world. This device was in a bin and the proprietor of that particular area said the price is free and I'm the demographic for free. So of course I took it home with me. I also got some basic electronics components for free from the same person. There are usually quite a lot of opportunities for cheap and free electronics from these places. Sometimes you don't know what they are. I see a mystery box like this and can't wait to figure out what it is. Does it work? What's inside? It is a risk of course, it could be empty for all I know. So what do you think? Is it a wireless device, a tone generator, some kind of filter? No idea. So in this video, I'll be opening up an electronic device to find out what makes it work and what is inside. The videos get technical, so hang on and always ask questions if you don't understand something. The components will be identified and analyzed. If you want to help out the channel, see the links on my webpage or in the description. Patron is live as well as the super button. Thanks to my current patrons and channel supporters. So yeah, I go to Hamfest type events. I actually don't have a license anymore since I let it lapse, but I had one for 20 years. Ended up not using it anymore, so I let it go. Too much time has passed to get it back now. But I still go to the events to find things. Chances are there is one not too far from wherever you are. I looked around and there were quite a few free signs abound and lots of items for sale. Some cheap, some expensive, but something for every electronics person. I didn't get any footage of the event, unfortunately. I didn't want to make anyone uncomfortable, but needs to say, an older gentleman was getting rid of some of his hoard and it was priced to sell. And by that, I mean free. So I picked up the little box and got the nod. Go ahead, it's yours, said the man. I smiled and was instantly thinking about what could be in this box. So of course, I immediately took it home and opened it up and started to look it over. A switch, an LED, and two RCA style connectors with an L and an R on the back of the box. I had an idea from the L and R of what this could be. My guess is some kind of tone, noise generator, or test box of some type. I didn't see any power input connections, so I am assuming it must have some battery connectors on the inside. So it's time to open it up and look at what is on the inside. After getting it all opened up, it looks pretty interesting. There are quite a few components in this thing, so few didn't get an empty box. But even that wouldn't be so bad for free. It looks like there are two 9 volt battery connections, so after checking for no short circuits, time to put some batteries in this thing and see if there's any life. I guess the first thing I can do is connect the batteries and just make sure the LED light comes on. So batteries in, flipping the switch, shows good. The LED light is on. So that's the good first sign. I gave it a quick sniff test and didn't smell any burning. Then I took out the thermal camera to give it a good look over to see if there were any components getting too hot. All looks good. There really shouldn't be anything getting very hot considering it operates from two 9 volt batteries. So why two 9 volt batteries? The first clue to why there would be two 9 volt batteries in this device is the 8 pin integrated circuits called operational amplifiers. That's these two components on the board, MC3458. These can swing voltages both positive and negative in reference to a local zero volt signal, but to do that, you need both supply voltages, positive and negative. This can be done with two 9 volt batteries as shown in this basic diagram. It is very effective to make cheap and relatively high voltage power supplies to supply signals to other devices. The first op amp on the board is used for gain and inversion of one of the signals. These are things op amps do well. The other chips included on this board are the CD4011, which is a quad input NAND gate. This is a digital logic chip, which means the signals are either on or off. How can this be used in an analog electronics device? Well, as we will see, there is more digital than analog in this box, but it's far from a computer. This is being used as part of the tone or noise generator circuit with the first operational amplifier and a few diodes. I didn't trace out the whole circuit, but there are general wire traces that seem to go that way. So it looks like we now know what this thing does. It makes some kind of a reference signal, either tonal or noise based. We'll have to check later to see what it actually is, but let's keep going with the other chips. Next chip on the board is the MC14013. This is a dual D type flip flop. This chip is serving two purposes. It is acting like an oscillator or a clock signal to keep things in some kind of time, as well as the source of the control signals for the next component. The last chip on this board is an MC14052. This is a dual analog four channel multiplexer chip, or basically a dual digital switch with four inputs and two outputs as used in this case. This can switch between four different signals and send those two, two different outputs. We will analyze how this is being used after we take a look at the signals from this device. Okay, next let's take a look at the signal on an oscilloscope. Okay, 
it does look like this is making noise. The signals on the oscilloscope are jumping all over the place and fairly random. If I change the mode on the scope into roll mode, we can see that this looks like it has a sequence that it runs through as well. Now, it is making sense why it has the flip-flop chip and the multiplexer chip. These enable this device to be able to have multiple different output options. And it looks like it sends different outputs to each of what I am now assuming are left and right labeled ports. It looks like it doesn't have great amplitude control. Also, my probing job isn't the best. Fairly certain one of the probes that came with this signal scope is already bricked out of the box. Not a surprise. It was cheap. Anyway, so on then off. I'm going to have to figure this sequence out and take some notes. In the meantime, I went ahead and recorded the signal so we can take a listen to see what it actually sounds like. I am playing back the raw audio now. Yep, sounds like noise to me. It isn't of a particular color variety for noise, but it is noise for sure. Interesting, sounds like there is some phase inversion as well. So this is a sequencer, noise generator, phase inverter in a box. The noise it makes is not perfectly flat, so not white noise as viewed on a fast Fourier transform, and not pink noise either, which would have a slope on a FFT, but rather something in between. There are several other components on the PCB that help shape these signals to be what they are, as well as work with to set gain and various other parameters for the operational amplifiers. I didn't go crazy analyzing these as I feel the value has been extracted by learning the high level function of the circuits. So it looks like it has four steps of the switch, which are controlled with two logic inputs, one or zero, coming from the flip flops. The sequence appears to be off, on, on, on for the left side output, while the right side output appears to be on, on, phase invert, off, on. So the logic is just carefully wired up so that this sequence is possible. It isn't really a full sequencer. It has four steps because it has two bits of input data. The controls are actually stepping, so it is sequencing through the four inputs one at a time, and the wiring is changed to pick which input is going to which output. If there is none, then it is just doesn't connect that input to that portion of the sequence and you get silence. Here's a diagram of how this looks logically to the outputs that are achieved. This is some pretty clever circuit design, making great use of a few chips to do quite a complicated task. I'm pretty happy with my find here and it is nice to see the smart use of some of the chips. I also like that all the functions can be traced out on the circuit board, the old way of doing things. No microprocessor here. The block diagram of the device is not too complicated. There carefully laid out sections on the circuit board and each one does its part to get the signal to the output in sequence every time until the battery goes dead. Make the signal, do a little shaping, send it to the switch, which distributes it to the left and right output as wired. I like it. Okay, I am going to take the mystery out of the box by adding some labels. These are for me, so I remember what this thing is. I know I should leave it as a mystery, but I'd rather know what it does when I pull this out of a bin in 10 years and have no idea what it is. So, the basic specifications are a sequenced noise generator with phase inversion and an approximately 100 millivolt amplitude. This was probably used to test bandwidth and alignment of systems on something like a radio. If this was a kit or something you've seen before, let me know down in the comments. Okay, this is a pretty interesting device. I feel like it would be ripe for some modifications to turn on and off the sequencing on one of the various steps or modify the filter for a source for a synthesizer of some kind. There is a ton of functionality that could be added to a base like this. For a homemade electronics device, this is pretty well made and it still works great. It goes to show that you never know what to expect when you get out and check out some of the electronic swap meets. There are tons of these swap meets and there are always opportunities to find some unique devices. This turned out to be a noise generator with some extra features added in. I really don't need such a thing as I already have better tools than this, but I think this is fun to explore and see what made this one tick. Thanks for watching. I know this one was a little different than the usual videos, but let me know what you think down in the comments. And let me know if I should try to make more content like this, or at least a couple into the mix. Next week, I will be continuing with more power banks. This time, the 250 watt Beastly Anchor and the 145 watt Ugrain. Is it a fair comparison? No idea. They're just two popular requests. Check my website for upcoming videos, just a schedule of release dates, and I have many more projects and products to get through, so many more videos in the future. Goodbye.